Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over using Nginx regex capture groups to redirect parts of a URL path. Now, that's quite the mouthful here, but check it out. Let's say that you have a website and you're changing around your URL structure and you want some old URLs to redirect to the new URLs. And, you know, you want to be a good citizen in the web there and not have those old URLs start to 404 or become dead links because who knows? Maybe folks there on the internet are linking back to your site. You wouldn't want those links to break. And maybe you have some, you know, SEO going on that you don't want to lose there. So you can use something like Nginx capture groups to help with that there. And by the way, this idea of capture groups are not specific to Nginx. It's a regular expression feature. You may or may not have seen that being used in different programming languages and tools. It just so happens that Nginx supports it and allows us to solve a couple of different use cases. And all of these examples that we're going to go over will apply to directly my site, nickjunatakis.com, because I am using Nginx there and I am using these capture groups to do quite a few different things here. So before we break this down, and we are going to go over the basics here in case you've never seen an Nginx uh, location block before, you know, this is the specific part towards the capture groups. But yeah, the use case in this case is, you know, I've had my blog for nine or 10 years now. And when I initially started it, I thought maybe, you know what, maybe in the future, I could be selling different things like courses and books and other digital goods. So I tried to do some premature optimization with my URLs. And I figured, okay, well, we can define those things as products. But then over time, I figured, you know what, I actually like making videos and courses and stuff like that. So let's be a little bit more specific and go to slash courses instead. For example, you know, if you go to uh, my site here and you go to slash courses, you know, you can see all the different courses that I have here. Uh, it's not slash products. However, you know, I didn't want any backlinks to slash products to start breaking here. And we can actually check this out with curl pretty nicely because curl is not going to auto uh, redirect to wherever you are being redirected here too. So we can do curl with uh, verbose mode here and just go to slash products. And that is going to let us know there in the the header response here, that's why I'm doing a dash V here. If we take a look at the location header, you know, right by my mouse here, we can see that we are being redirected to, you know, nickjunatakis.com slash courses instead of uh, products there. And we can see Nginx is letting us know that we're doing a 301 uh, redirect here. So that's a pretty nice way just to test your Nginx stuff here because, you know, a browser typically is going to auto file redirects unless you turn that option off. And then you looked in, uh, you know, dev tools and other, thing, other things to get those details here. And again, if you want curl to do that as well, you know, you can just do dash capital L here or dash dash location and that would load up the products page, or sorry, the courses page here, because it is going to uh, auto redirect there. So yeah, that's just how that is a nice way to test these things here. Uh, so just so we can see how this one works. Now, the next use case is pretty similar, but it just demonstrates one slight difference here. And oh, by, you know, I should have mentioned too, before we even jump to that second one. Yeah, I did promise I'm going to go over some of the basics here. Might be nice to see how the actual uh, capture group works before we move on. But yeah, this is an Nginx location block. We're doing a regular expression match here. And anything that matches this regular expression inside of these braces here will get executed. You know, in this case, we are doing a permanent 301 redirect to a different URL path. And when it comes to the capture groups, you know, this is the part that is uh, surrounding in parentheses here. Again, this is not an Nginx specific syntax. This is, uh, you know, regular expression syntax. And we want to capture everything inside of there. And then this dollar sign one is a variable that will contain whatever was captured there. So you can see how the name capture is like that, right? We're capturing the stuff into a variable and then using it later, which is quite nice here. And this is good because, you know, you know, in the example that we saw here, we're just going to slash products, which gets redirected to slash courses. But what if you went to, you know, slash products slash like hello or you know some name of a course or something like that you would just want to have that hello or name of the course available so that we can redirect to whatever you want and just get that name out so that's how we're doing that there cool okay so let's take a look at a different example here which is uh, basically the same thing but a little bit different use case you know in this case we are doing another capture group same as before dollar sign one everything in parentheses you know in this case we're just matching on digits so one or more digits instead of everything i just wanted to demonstrate that that can be done here and this did apply to my site as well because uh, I haven't made a video or a blog post about this one yet, but I did switch from Jekyll to Hugo, I don't know, maybe like six weeks ago, something like that. And the URL structure of the paginated blog posts have changed quite a bit. So for example, you know, if you went to my blog here and you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of different pages here. I don't know, there's like 30 of them or whatever it is because I have like 500 blog posts, but um, you can look at the URL bar now. It's, it's blog slash page slash five. That's uh, the Hugo setup here with the pagination. However, when I was using Jekyll in the past, the URL structure was a little bit different. It was blog slash page, and then the digit was right next to the page. So for example, if we went to uh, blog page like this, you know, this is how it was set up in Jekyll some time ago. 
And uh, yeah, if we run this one, we can see that it is going to do another 301 redirect because we have the same rules here. But in this case, it's going to redirect to slash blog slash page slash three. So that extra slash there is being included. And that's what we're doing here. And uh, yeah, in this case, everything else is basically the same here. But again, just, you know, it's nice to see different use cases being solved in uh, the same way using the same features here. You know, maybe uh, this can apply to whatever you're doing as well. Now, there are other things you can do a little bit more complicated. You can have multiple capture groups. You can have named capture groups. So let's take a look at that real quick here in this third example here, which is going to be a named capture group, which is really no different than the first example. In fact, you know, let me just open up that first one here. I'll just open up below so you can see both at the same time here. Uh, this is the exact same rules, you know, the same idea here, redirecting products to courses. The only difference here is this little bit of extra syntax where we are now assigning this a uh, custom name and then that name becomes a variable that then you can access over here. So this is quite nice because, you know, let's say you have a couple of different capture groups or maybe you just want to be a little bit more explicit in what this thing is. You can choose to name it because, you know, like shell scripting too, you just have like a dollar sign one floating around in the middle of your script. You're like, what the heck is that? Now in this case, you know, it's only two lines and super small and super simple. And if you know how capture groups work, then yeah, maybe using this uh, syntax is okay. But yeah, you do have the option here to use the question mark and then the angled brackets, put whatever name that you want here. You know, I happen to name it product here because that's what it is. But uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter what the name is. You know, it's not correlated to something like the singular version of uh, what's ever listed here, right? You can name this A, B, X, you know, some word and it's all good to go here. And uh, I will mention this one, and this is maybe where you might want to consider using named uh, features. Uh, I don't actually have an example set up beforehand for this one because I'm actually not using this anywhere in my site. But if you had something like this, where you had, I don't know, issues and like some comments or something like this, and you had, and you want to do multiple capture groups, then you can totally do that as well. For example, you know, just going back to here, I don't know, this is like a really horrible and named example, but you know, if you wanted to do something like renaming issues to A and renaming comments to B or something like that, then uh, you can just do something like this and then, yeah, you know, I'm just going to remove the isarg stuff just so it's a little bit easier to look at on screen here on the video. But uh, yeah, the idea here is you can have multiple capture groups, you know, in the order they are specified is the number that aligns to them. For example, this capture group is going to be dollar sign one. This capture group is going to be dollar sign two. And again, if you want to make, you know, use names on these as well, whatever it happens to be here, then uh, you can do this too. And this is going to work. You can mix and match this stuff as well. Like you can still uh, use this as well. And this would still be actually, you know what? I'm not going to say that because I don't know. I've never thought to mix and match these one. Is this going to be dollar sign two or dollar sign one? I'm going to think it's probably going to be dollar sign two because, you know, we still have the capture group defined over here, which is technically dollar sign one. It just happens to have uh, a custom name here. But yeah, let us know in the comments if you've actually used this specific combination of how, of how that works here. Um, but yeah, with that said, this is basically a pretty short video on just using capture groups. Let us know in the comments below if you've actually used these to solve any problems. I'll try to do my best to answer any questions if you drop in some comments below. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.